Hello, I'm Philip Duncan. Thank you for joining us for our Climate Watch update for the month of February and also the outlook for the start of autumn. Some of you might not want to hear that, but it's uh, just around the corner. This is brought to you by ruralweather.co.nz and our official business partners at IBM. So let's take a look and see what is happening uh, wind-wise as we kick off the first day of February. And this is showing basically where the moisture is coming from out of the atmosphere. So very tropical in the bright blue, that's why there's plenty of rain in those areas. But also there is that atmospheric river that came down and brought the very wet end to January and also the wet start to February and the very humid airflow across the country. Big thunderstorms in Southland over the last day or so and in the North Island obviously all that rain, humidity, slips and flooding. But there's also cooler, drier air coming in for parts of Australia. That system is heading towards the South Island for Waitangi weekend. Let's have a look and see what is going on with the La Nina side of things. So sea surface temperatures with La Nina, it's usually very warm over here, but right now it's heading back to normal. So the Bureau of Meteorology in Australia say that basically all the ways they used to measure La Nina have said it's basically gone now, but in the atmosphere, it's still lingering. We're still getting the La Nina-like weather, and that could still linger on for a few more months, even though we're fading back to neutral. But also notice the red down here. We're going to talk about that in a moment, the marine heat wave still going on around New Zealand and may actually be part of the reason we've seen so much rain at the north of the country as well, where it's also still warmer than average. Let's have a look at the Bureau of Meteorology's uh, model of all models, the global community and what they're saying as far as La Nina is concerned. So here we are, we're just coming out of La Nina and going into neutral as we go through February. By the time we're in autumn, we're smack bang in the middle there, which means no El Nino, no La Nina, the normal chaotic, unsettled westerly weather pattern that we tend to get, or maybe some tropical stuff as well. It's very chaotic. And then as we go through to June, some signs that we're heading towards El Nino for either the end of winter or the start of spring. Now, the Bureau of Meteorology also point out that at this time of the year, these long range forecasts aren't quite as accurate as at other times of the year. So even though it strongly says in that graph before we're heading to El Nino, there's still a few question marks. So we'll talk about that briefly uh, shortly. But this is what they're saying for February, all these different models around the world, they're still leaning on the La Nina side. So even though technically it's likely to finish this month, probably in a couple of weeks time, uh, four weeks maximum, I would say, we're still going to be feeling the La Nina effect. So it'll be a while before we head off towards the drier, uh, cooler El Nino. So this is the long range outlook. And remember again, the further out you go at this time of the year, the less accurate it is. But as you can see, the line's pretty steady heading up to El Nino conditions and that's sort of around about winter, plus or minus a couple of months. So it might not be till maybe the end of winter or the start of spring. Either way though, we're heading back into a more neutral pattern in the months ahead. And that means that it's not necessarily driven so much by what's going on up in the tropics, but it also means there's not necessarily much of a pattern to it. It can be quite messy and you can have a high one week and a low the next. So the sea surface temperatures, I mentioned before how it's getting closer to normal back up in the Coral Sea again. But look at this, down around Stewart Island and Southland, you're five degrees above average. That is a heat wave in the marine area and also the north of the country warmer than average by a few degrees. So those slow moving uh, rain bands we had, uh, the big flood in Auckland at the end of January, you know, it was very slow moving and enhanced by these warmer than average conditions out at sea and in the, the harbours as well. And also this time of the year, very warm. So this is the departure from normal. This is the current temperatures. All of New Zealand is mild. You can pretty much swim uh, in the sea, as long as the weather's good, obviously. Um, but uh, sea temperature wise, we're into that time of year where it's the warmest. Soil moisture wise now, let's take a look at the Niwa soil moisture map and it looks like someone knocked over the blue ink. The whole North Island basically saturated now, with one exception, the lower southwestern corner. Manawatu, uh, around Horofenua, into Wellington, those areas are a little bit drier. Now they've had some decent downpours and thunderstorms in the last week or two. That's the reason why the greens come back and some of the blue in there. But boy, what a lot of rain over the north. Now the west coast looks pretty dry. That's about to change. You're going to see in a moment all the rain that's on the way, but about two to 300 millimetres over the next half a month. So that's going to end any conversation about drought and probably get rid of, rid of those uh, sprinkler bands. On the eastern side, 
not quite so wet. So Canterbury has got drier weather on the way still. There may be a little bit of relief here and there, the odd downpour, the odd shower, but nothing much. And then down in Southland, a bit borderline as well, but you've seen some big downpours just in the last couple of days, which is also useful. So let's have a look at what is going on over the next few months. If we just take a look at high pressure and low pressure, it sort of helps us work out the general trend. So here we are on the 1st of February, and you can see high pressure out to the east. This is that big blocking system. Low pressure out in the Tasman Sea, and in between the two, that has been the squash zone, why it's been windy, why we've seen gales around Auckland and Northland, and why we had all that heavy rain trapped between low pressure and high pressure. It's been like that for about a week. Finally, it's going to break apart and move off to the east in the first week of February, but then we've got this low down here, coming up to Tasmania, over to the South Island for Waitangi weekend. Now by next week, by the start of week number two of February, that uh, low pressure stuff moving away, although still plenty of low pressure in our part of the world, but high pressure from Australia is moving in. Perhaps a bit of a cooler southerly and not as humid. That humidity will take a bit of a break if this is exactly how it sets up in a week's time. And then we get to the middle part of the month and it's still showing that sign of being a bit more unsettled. High pressure, low pressure, high pressure, low pressure. So it's plenty of variety coming through. Not too stormy up in the tropics, no sort of sign of any major cyclones, at least not on the three maps we showed you. I mean, there could always be something in between somewhere. But for now, uh, the tropics not as bad as it could be considering uh, how warmer than average it's been for the last couple of months. So we've got variety coming through. That's really the main feature. And for parts of Australia, you know, getting these big windy southerlies coming through. And on our side, the New Zealand side, the windy northerlies around the middle of the month. And so basically, as we go through and towards the fourth week, we'll probably be seeing more of the low high mixture coming out of the Indian Ocean. So rain wise, let's have a look at this now the first week of February departure from normal. In other words, how much wetter or drier compared to usual will it be? So the west coast, there's your rain returning. The top of the country, there's your drier weather returning. The blue you see over here, the very pale blue, that's probably more to do with the rain falling as we were recording this on the 1st of February from that uh, very wet event. And then you've also got this dry continuation around Canterbury, also spreading up around sort of lower parts of the North Island. So perhaps going back a little bit more to a, a normal weather pattern that we get at this time of the year because these areas should be dry and the west coast should be wetter than it has been. So rainfall, the next two weeks, this is taking you right through to the 15th of February and look at all this rain over on the west coast. Uh, heavy rain surrounded by the pink, purple and red. So it's taking you right up to the 300 millimeter mark over there on the west coast. But the blue on this side surrounded by the green and the yellow five millimeters. So there is not much rain, that's just out at sea of course, but not much rain coming in for Canterbury. You're really talking about anywhere between about 10 and 20 millimeters for the next two weeks. So that's just a little bit, it's about normal for this time of the year, maybe a little bit drier than normal. I know that you do need a bit more rain in that area. Look at all the rain also around Sydney, could be a couple of hundred millimeters coming over there for you and very wet in Tasmania. The rain you see here, this is showing uh, the pink area there, 100 millimeters or so, Again, that's mostly what's happening today, February the 1st, as we recorded this from that very wet northerly airflow. So generally speaking, more of the wet weather on the west coast, drier on the east coast, and the very top of the country seeing a drier spell, although still seeing showers in the mix. Let's take a look now at the IBM map. This is just showing you departure from normal. I got rid of the key. I used the key last month. You can barely read it and it doesn't make a lot of sense. So you're better off to just look at the color shading and see, generally speaking, the North Island is still leaning wetter than average for this month. But you have to remember, some of this will be simply what fell on the very first day of the month because it was so heavy. So a lot of that green may be from what is going on right now down around the South Island. It's not even really showing you that 300 millimeters of rain coming through because it may well dry back out again as we go through the month. But let's just keep an eye on that because you know these long range sort of uh, glances, these departure from normals, sometimes don't always capture every single rain event. It's more of a sort of just step back and take a look and see what is our general trend. And here's the general trend for the next three months, basically the same as what we've had. Now, that does not mean we're in for the same floods and slips and all that sort of carry on, but we are basically seeing more wet weather around the North Island 
and around that northeastern corner of the South Island and staying drier than average a little bit in the south. And over in Australia, much wetter than average as well, which has been their pattern now for several months as all that rain continues to fall. This is not anything dramatic. It's just saying, you know, if you're on the scales, you're just leaning wetter. Same with New Zealand. It's not necessarily saying it's going to be as bad as what we've just had. It's just saying more likely to see some wet weather than the non-stop dry weather. Temperatures for February. Here's a change. Haven't seen much change in these temperature mats for the last year. But the North Island, the pale sort of yellow, actually means it's pretty close to normal, whereas it's warmer than average by nearly a degree further down the country. So thick cloud cover is part of the reason for that, and also maybe a bit of a shift in the air flows. And as you take a look at the three month temperature uh, departure from normal, again, the South Island leaning warmer, the lower part of the North Island leaning a little bit warmer, but the top half, yes, it is a little bit warmer than average, but only a little bit. It's only sort of just 0.3 degrees above average which means probably the days are a little bit flatter, the nights might be a little bit warmer because of the humidity and all the uh, extra cloud. So there we go, that is the outlook for February, March, April. I mean, it's basically a bit unsettled. It's a little bit warmer than it should be in the uh, New Zealand area and likely to still carry on being wetter than average, although that doesn't necessarily mean floods. That just means you know your normal rainfall and then maybe another few extra days of rain or showers, that sort of thing. So we'll keep an eye on it. Like I say, this is not a weather forecast. This is a more of a climate outlook. I do use weather maps in it, but it's really just to give you an idea of the trend and what is going on. It's not really a forecast to say, hey, on February the 20th, what's going to be uh, happening at my house. But I hope that helps. That is it for this month. Back again in one month, hopefully with some optimism, uh, more optimism for parts of the country.